Hello everyone, so in this video let us talk about all the four problems from the latest Beat Code Weekly Contest 302. So let's start. It's a very easy problem, so all the problems are very easy, so stay tuned, we'll cover up very quickly all of them. First problem is maximum number of pairs in an array. So the problem statement is very simple, it states that you are given an integer array and then what you have to do is that you can choose two same numbers, form them a pair and remove it from this nums array. Okay, so now you can you just have to tell me that how many different number of pairs you can form and after removing those pairs what are different number of like what is the total number of numbers that are left in the nums array. So it, it's very simple you just try to make as many pairs as you can and whatever the number is left is the total number of numbers. So how you can pick the pairs you can just have to count out how many numbers of each type are there or like each value are there. So for that you can use a map to store for every number how many times it has occurred. So let's say that 2 is occurred 5 times. Let is, let's say that 2 has occurred 5 times. So this is frequency. This is value. You can just make a map out of it. It just iterate over the whole uh, value. That 2 has occurred 5 times. 4 has occurred let's say 4 times. 3 has occurred let's say 7 times and so on. Now because you know that 2 has occurred 5 times. You can make 2 pairs. Uh, by 2 pairs I means that 2 has occurred 2 like uh, five times in this whole array so you can make this as a pair this as a pair and now one is left so you have to take it as a separate one that will be left in the array so how many pairs you have formed two so how you can just find it out just divide it by two so it, it will give you two so it means that because two pairs are formed and if you just do five mod two it will give you one what what we are trying to do is actually like how many pairs I can form and every pair will have two entities so divided by two that how many two entities pairs you can form it will it will give you two that you have to form two pairs and how much are left like if you just divide it by like modded by two it will give like how many elements are left so one element is left and you just have to do this for every pair value so just iterate over a map just like take a map iterate over every number store the frequency then again iterate over the map and you have two values now how many pairs can form and how many numbers are left. So for that just iterate over the map again for every frequency find it it's divide by 2 and mod by 2 divide by 2 just add in a mod by 2 like whatever is the modulus like whatever is left that put it into b and like you have now the pairs and the left ones just make it some sort of vector and just return that's the overall logic for the first problem second problem is max sum of a pair with equal sum of digits so as you can understand from the name of the problem statement as, as well also that you have to find out the max sum of a pair with equal sum of digits. So you have the numbers, you have to first find out that the numbers which has equal sum of the digits, you have to form a pair out of it and you have to maximize the sum of that pair. So for that you have to first find out the sum of the digits of every number. So you can just do an O of N operation over all the numbers and just find out the sum of all the numbers and then you can make a map of vector. Okay, by map of vector I means that for every number that has the same sum of digits just store them in some some sort of an array for every value so for what i can try to say here is that let's say you have some numbers let's say a b c d and so on so let's say that the first number has the total sum of digits is 5 and then the number is let's say 23 then the next number is let's say the total number total sum of digits is 6 and the number is let's say 33 and then you again have a number that has a total sum of digits that is equal to 5 again and that is let's say 41. So you are just trying to make let's say a map of all the numbers or let's say grouping all the numbers that are the same sum of digits. So you can just make a map in which the key is the sum of the digits and the value is the let's say an array or a container which is storing out all the numbers that have the same sum of digits. And finally what you'll do, you have these numbers and then what you tend to do is that you can only form pairs from this container or this container and so on. So if you want to find out that what is the sum of the maximum pair I can get in this. So you can just sort out all the numbers because I just want to choose the two maximum one because the two maximum one will obviously be giving us the more sum of the pair. So you can just choose the two maximum one among them and just maximize them over all the arrays that you have formed and that's the answer. So what you can see here is that this is the convert function that will convert the sum or actually the, the integer to its corresponding digit sum. So what we are trying to do is that we will first iterate over every number and then convert that particular integer into its digit sum and for that particular digit sum I insert that digit sum map 
and push back that particular number inside that. So now we have a vector. Now for every position, iterate over the map. For every vector that we have, just sort it out. And when we sort it out, if the length is greater than greater than equal to, then only I can have two numbers. Because let's say if the number has only one uh, element, let's say that there is only one number that has the sum of let's equal ten, and there is no other element. Because I want to form a pair, I cannot form a pair. So it's based just iterate over the number. So I will just sort out all the numbers inside the vector and just choose the last two. That is, this is the size of the last two, and just maximize it overall the answer. If you have got the answer, then the answer is fine. If the answer is not there, I will return minus one. That we have initialized. That is more on our third problem. Query kth smallest trimmed number. So the problem statement is very simple, though it becomes very tricky if you understood. Like, like for many of the people, it becomes tricky. But you can directly see that you have to always always understand the like constraints also. If the constraint is sent hundred only. As for the query is hundred, you can do of o of n cube. The maximum like time complexity you can go is o of n cube also, which is very brute force. So just think about the very brute force way and uh, it will work actually. And what you will have to do is that you have an integer array, like a nums array, which has numbers in the form of string, as you can see. Now you have different queries that you have to answer. For every query, what you actually have to find out is that you are given two values, that is key of i and trim of i. Trim of i means that you have to trim these all the numbers, such from the back, from the back, such that only trim i amount of numbers are left. So let's say that it is equal to one. So one number in left is from back in all these numbers. So as you can see, it is two, three, one, four. Again, if you just trim all the numbers, so so let's say this is the second query, and if you trim all the numbers, does that only three numbers are left? And every every one is three numbers, so the same array is remained. Now you have to trim the nums array in which two numbers are left from the back. So two numbers are zero, two. Seven three five one one four and so on. So you have now these numbers, and from these numbers you have to find out the number which is the kth smallest. So for that you have to just sort it out. That's very simple. So you have to, and because it's very brute force, what you can actually do is that you can just iter iterate over every number. Just find out these trim digits. Sort out the array and then find out the indexes of the kth smallest number. Because you have to also keep track of the index. And when you are sorting, you are like. Losing track of index, you have to also store these numbers with their indexes so that when you sort them out, it become very easy for you. That's all the logic here. So I'll take down the code part now directly. So what we, what you are trying to do is that we have to find out the answer vector that the indexes for every query. So that's the answer vector. So iterate over every query. I'm iterating over every query. For every query, we have to make a vector that is a trimmed vector. But trimmed container, what you can say. In the container, we are storing two values. The one is the trimmed number as well as the index that I found it on. So then, this is the vector to store the answer. Iterate over every what you can say string inside the nums vector, and then use the substring function to trim it. Okay, because we are starting from the so I have to trim let's say trim of i number of digits from the very back. So what we can do is we can start from the very Back minus this trim number, so I will get the last trim digits as you can see. Then push back this particular value, like a trimmed string, as well as the index that I found out that is on this j inside a vector. Sort it out, and because it is kth, but we are like uh, if you want to get it into index, you have to subtract minus one because it is your index, and we are given one index. So I have subtracted by one, and then whatever number is there, just push back. So whatever number is there, I have to push back that index. So index is the second value that is stored. So Dot second, you just push that into answer and just print out the answer. Very, pretty, pretty simple. Only pretty straightforward because the constraints are very small. That's why. It is. The last problem is minimum deletion to make array divisible. In this, also, what you're trying to do is that you are given some numbers and you can remove out some numbers, any numbers you can want. Thus, that you have to delete out the minimum number of numbers from this nums array, such that the smallest number that is remaining. Should be dividing all the numbers in nums divide. Now, how you can do that? If I want to find out first, let's say my problem is to somewhat find a number that divides all these numbers of nums of divide. For that, I I just want to find out the let's say HCF or GCD of all the numbers inside this nums of nums of divide. So, if you want to find out the GCD of all the numbers, what you can actually do is that you can just form a pair and then extending that pair. What you are trying to do is let's say when you find a GCD, you can find a GCD of two numbers only. Then you can find 
when what you got as the answer just take that number as the gcd of two numbers and do the gcd of with the third number then whatever you got the answer just do it the third gcd of fourth number so that you get the gcd of all their numbers let us that you have 9639969315 so 9693315 is the numbers and you have to find out the gcd of all the numbers you cannot just add directly find out the gcd of all the numbers but what you can do is that you can form a pair like the let's say the first two numbers and find out the gcd gcd of this is let's say 3 then you form the answer of this and this as a pair and the gcd of this is again 3 then this and this as a pair answer is again 3 this and this as a pair and this answer is again 3 so the gcd of all the numbers is actually equal to 3 and that is the property that you can hold upon and just find out the answer so what it actually means is that you have to somewhat make the number the smallest number in the num array three or a multiple of three because if it is three then then we have got the answer if it also multiple of three then also it will divide three and it will eventually divide all the numbers so because three is a very small number but let's say if you have 100 let's say if you have 100 so you can find out the smallest number to be 100 in num array or you can also let's say make five also because 5 divides 10 100 and then 100 divides all of these numbers so it actually just prove our theory so what you can actually do is that find a gcd of all of these numbers and then you have to find out the smallest number in this like which is dividing that gcd of this number so for that for smallest number you just sort out the numbers and just iterate from left to right for every number and whatever number is the smallest number that you first encounter that divides all of these number like the gcd of that number that number is a perfect answer so for reaching that number or making that number the smallest you have to remove all the numbers from the front till that number so that i will get that particular number as the smallest and uh, that's what we want so that's our logic here what we will do is that we will first find the gcd of all the numbers okay and then sort the numbers then what you will do just iterate over all the numbers from left to right and whatever the first number that you find out that is dividing the gcd of all the numbers that you have found of nums of divide that is the answer that we want and that's the answer should be the smallest number in there for that to be smallest number i have to delete all the number that are more smaller in nums so that this number will become the smallest and that's what we want so how much number that we have to delete this i because i is the number of elements that i'm on so let's say i have found out that fifth index number is dividing this uh, gcd of all the numbers and that's the perfect answer that we want so fifth number i want so all the numbers before it let's say four numbers I have to delete all the four numbers. So fifth index that I want, so five numbers are before that because fifth index is means means that the sixth number and sixth number means that there are five numbers more that are smaller because I've already sorted this out. And I have to remove if I remove all those five numbers from the array, then this number will become the smallest, and that's what we actually want. So that's what the answer is. If there is no such possible answer, then return minus one. That's our logic. And code part for this problem as well. So this is the GCD finding out all the numbers. So n and GCD finding out is log n. So n log n. Sorting it is again n log n. This is O of n, so the root language complexity is n log n. That is perfect for finding out the answer. So that's our lo logic and time complexity for all the problems. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. Daily coding and bye.